In this third demo video, we'll be creating another finite extensional model to show that this argument is invalid. The main difference in this question is that the third premise contains an inequality. So the translations of this are uh, not as straightforward as the previous ones, but you should see that you're actually well equipped to do this uh, from all the sort of previous exercises we've been doing. So the first premise, for all x, m, x, x, arrow, not f, x, nothing tricky about this. It just says, if, uh, if you m yourself, then you're not an f, okay? Uh, uh, so that's pretty straightforward. Premise two looks a little weird because we haven't done lots of biconditional translations before, uh, but you actually know what the biconditional means. And you should realize that you know what negation in the second slot of the biconditional means, because you could take this negation in the second slot and actually rip it out so that it looks like a negation of biconditional waiting to happen. That's fine. Now, why am I focusing on this? Because you should remember that this form, this, this is something we, we might not have talked about since sentential logic. This is actually a nice form of something. And it's a form of uh, a common English phrase. Can you see it? This common English phrase is the exclusive or. So the negation of a biconditional is the exclusive or. That's something we've known for quite a long time. So this just says everything exclusive or. Now you wouldn't really want to write that. You would say everything is F or G, but not both. What about this third premise? Well, this third premise, again, there's nothing actually too bad about it. It just says this numerical phrase, and you should recognize that it says a numerical phrase from the fact that it has a does not equal, and it's repetitive, and so on, and from all the work we've done in symbolization. So what does it say? X is an F, Y is an F, X doesn't equal Y. Clearly, that says at least two Fs. So I can say there are at least two Fs, and mxy and not mxy. Well, what does that mean? They m each other one way, but not the other. So like before, I'm going to do the negation of the conclusion. Well, the negation of the conclusion, again, a mini derivation will be really sort of handy here. So the negation of the conclusion here is not for all x, negation mxx. I'm not going to translate this. This is just ridiculous. Clearly, this just says there exists x and xx. How did I get that? I did a quantifier negate, and then I just double negated these two things away, and that's it. Uh, something m's itself. UD, I'm going to start with 0, 1, and I leave it open just in case. I need F1, I need G1, uh, and finally now I need M2. So I always like to start at the existentials. The existentials I just find are the, the sort of smartest places to start. So if something M's itself, there are at least two F's. These are two solid places to start. So something M's itself, well, what do you want thing that, that thing to be? I don't care. How about zero? Okay. So open the set bracket. Zero, zero. I have now made the negation of the conclusion true. Now, if I scan around, I'm just looking for any other information that might matter to what I just wrote down. And premise one says, if you M yourself, zero, zero, then you're not an F. So this means that zero is not an F, okay? So I could write no zero here. But if you remember from premise two, premise two says everything is F or G, but not both. So if zero isn't an F, it must be G. It just has to be G. Okay, how do I do uh, premise three? There are at least two Fs and they M each other one way, but not the other. Well, you just put two things in F. 0, 1. I quickly check and I realize that I cannot do this. Everything is F or G but not both. This is exclusive OR as we talked about. So the problem here is now I have 0 in F and 0 in G. So I can't do that. So I need to get rid of that 0. But at the same time, I still need at least two things in F. And I don't have any more members of my universe of discourse. So no problem. To solve this, I add another element to my universe of discourse. 
And so now I can genuinely put two things in F, one, two, and I haven't violated the exclusive or. Okay, uh, so far so good. Now I have to make sure if you M yourself, you're not an F. Oh, we already did that because zero, zero, no zero and F, good. The last thing I have to fix is this thing. They M each other one way, but not the other. Well, that means if I put one, two in here, I better not put in two, one. It can't go the other way. That makes premise three true. Premise two is true because zero, one, two, they're all in F or G, but not both. And if you M yourself, then you are not an F. True. This is my model. I close the sets and that's the solution. Again, if you just are doing this on a test, you only need to provide the final model.